Hey guys, it's Dave Seeky at Evolve Lab, and today the team is excited to share that Varus 1.9 has been released. There's a lot of interesting features to cover today, including some new presets, the ability to save your own custom presets, negative prompts, and a thank you to user Jorgensen from the forums for the idea, um, some cinematic and film photography options, as well as a new render engine called V6 Sharp. So with all that said, let's get into it. All right, so I'm here inside of Varus 4 Revit, and the first thing that you'll notice is all the new presets. We have a total of 30, 21 added in this version, and to go along with that, we now have the ability to click on the preset name to not only get another complete list and a way to jump around, but more importantly, we have this search. So if I type in realistic, I will get anything with that in the name. So quick way to find what you're looking for. All right, so next let's start playing with some presets. So why don't I run one of these and jump over to the Compose tab. So here we can see all of the settings of the preset, but if I make any changes, you can now see that the preset's been modified up here and there's a button to revert your changes. So once I click that, it goes right back to the way it was, but why don't I just make a couple tweaks and send another render. All right, so now that both are back, we have this one that's been modified as well as the original. And let's say that I wanna keep this, I can click the little ellipsis and do a save as, and we'll call this demo. And as soon as you save it, it's gonna pull the most recent render and load it in as a thumbnail. So if I wanna make some additional changes, now that this is a custom preset, again, it's gonna show that it's been modified and we could revert back. But if you do wanna keep the changes, you can click the ellipsis and now you'll have the ability to save. And if I run a new render, You know, if I like these changes, I can click this button and then update the image. And then it's going to pull this most recent image and replace the thumbnail for the preset. To access custom presets, just click on the preset name and you'll have them all at the top under this heading, My Presets. One thing to note is that they are all cross-platform. So here I have the web app and I have the demo preset available. If you're not quite seeing it, just click the little ellipsis and you can refresh your presets um, and that should get it on the list. But any presets you make in any app will show up across your account. Now let's talk about negative prompt and how to use it. So here I've loaded up a few shots using the preset Modern Concrete Sakura and they're all looking really good, but maybe I don't want this overcast sky. I could use negative prompt to put in cloudy or overcast here and it might work, but what would be more effective is if I just type in the weather that I do want here. So um, I'm gonna put in clear sky and sunny, but maybe these orange lights are something that I don't wanna see. Um, so I could just put in orange lights. So I just want you to think about, could I be more specific with my initial prompt to get what I'm looking for? and then use kind of the negative prompt uh, for the things that you can't approach with that more specific direct prompt. Here, I'll generate a few results. All right, here we go. And perfect, exactly what we wanted. We eliminated those orange lights, and then we were just a little bit more specific with the initial prompt to get um, the clear sky. Next, I'll cover cinematic and what it does. So here, I've loaded up the container house preset. And if you haven't played with this thing, it's super fun. Just the same model, but like, look at these results. So if I click through these few, you'll notice that there's some pretty high contrast going on. And then as soon as I get into this one that I've enabled cinematic, there's a, the, the contrast of lights and darks is a lot more balanced. There's a color grading that's happening. So just a strong mood on the image. So hopefully between these next four and those first four that I showed, you'll get a grasp of what cinematic is really adding to the shot. And then just one thing to be aware of is it really has a strong influence on atmosphere. So here I've enabled it and it really cranks that a mood up to 11. The, it's super foggy. And again, 
here with another straw it's kind of the same thing but if i disable cinematic i'm still getting some of that cloud some of that fog but it's just not nearly as strong as it is when both are enabled so just something to be aware of next i want to talk about film photography it's another one that's a little hard to nail down with an exact definition but i'm hoping that showing you a few examples will help um show exactly what it does so here i have the parametric light voronoi preset and i've generated a few results and they're all looking spectacular but once i click into here i've disabled film photography and you'll immediately notice that the image gets a lot more muted um, and as i click through these other results that's that's kind of what you can gather if if i click back to this first one it'll become pretty obvious those shadows are just a lot darker the bright spots are a lot brighter so the overall image just has a, a bigger dynamic range. So hopefully that helps you understand what you're going to get when you enable film photography. And finally, I want to talk about V6 Sharp, our newest render engine. So having a little fun here using Balsa Wood model preset. And this is just that same model. Um, but you can see immediately that, like especially in this one, it normalized this whole surface. And... Um, v6 sharp really takes all of the geometry literally and processes it through so the only change you can see the prompt and geometry override everything the same but now that i've switched to v6 sharp they, that whole surface pattern was like respected in the new image so here i have like those top railings that whole architectural detail and you'll see in each of these even the the window shape in the window trim is more accurately accurately represented um, where in these first images, just using V6, uh, a lot gets normalized. And that's okay, like once you're in a kind of creative phase. Um, but once you have an accurate model like we have here, you probably want to use V6 Sharp to make sure that nothing gets lost in the details. Okay, so I hope this video helps you make the most of Varus 1.9 and all its new features. If you have any questions, post in the comments section below or jump onto our forums. And if you want to stay up to date, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. So until next time, have a great day.